We're now living in a world where we can not only build solutions for, but also measure more down funnel actions. So start with the platform and think about the entire streamer journey. So while engaging with me via an impactful 30 second ad while I'm watching ad supported content is important. Let's take four steps back, four clicks back, we like to say, and think about the moment I turn on my television. You're listening to Retail Remix, your inside access to candid conversations with the people shaping retail's future. Here's your host, Alicia Esposito. If you're a reader or a follower of Retail Touchpoints, you probably know that I am a huge believer in the convergence of content and commerce, whether it's through connected TV, through retail media, or shoppable media, there is just so much creative opportunity for brands and retailers to not only engage their audience, but also guide them along that purchase journey from awareness and inspiration all the way through to conversion. But of course, with any hot topic, there is sometimes confusion, complexity, and even fragmentation. This is especially the case with CTV and streaming. That's why I wanted Sarah Monahan to come on the show. She is Roku's head of retail. She is a advertising pro, and she really has her finger on the pulse, not just what's happening in CTV specifically, but in this entire evolving world of marketing and advertising. So we dig into the details a bit. We talk about the macro opportunity for CTV, how it's evolving, but also some of the challenges that are emerging for brands that are trying to shape their strategy. And of course, I couldn't talk about CTV and shoppable media without talking about, well, I gotta be honest, geeking out (laughs) about Walmart's Add to Heart campaign. Sarah shared a lot of helpful insights, helped me understand the landscape better. So hopefully she provided you with some insights, inspiration, and some tactical takeaways as well. Sarah, thanks so much for being on the show. So excited to have you on. Hi, Alicia. Thanks so much for having me. So we have been covering connected TV or CTV advertising quite a bit in 2023. And it's been honestly very fascinating for me just to see how the audience has grown, how the opportunities have evolved for brands specifically. So to start our conversation, let's start with the big idea or the big opportunity, I guess, especially as we make way into 2024. Can you expand upon or explain the size and the total addressable market potential here as we think about CTV and the opportunity for brands and retailers? Absolutely. In short, the opportunity is massive. 2023 was a very pivotal year in terms of the shift to streaming. So in August, we saw linear drop below 50% in total TV time for the first time, whereas streaming reached an all-time high of nearly 40% of all viewership in the United States. That presents such a massive opportunity for brands. We've seen enterprise brands, Fortune 500 brands, start to really understand This shift in terms of consumer habits is not reversing. It's actually accelerating. So they're very leaned in, very excited about the potential from a brand advertising perspective. But I would say as far as advertising, we've just scratched the surface relative to what the actual viewership looks like in 2023. Yeah, it's so interesting, right? Because we're seeing cord cutting continue. We're seeing subscriptions go up. We're seeing that activity really happen, which shows massive potential. And I guess to that end, I'm wondering what the implications are for brands, because like as I think about investment in CTV and determining where to invest, how to build a strategy, I mean, what should they be thinking about right now? Because again, that cord cutting is happening, but then there are also so many different services, platforms and offerings that are emerging, but then also kind of melding together. It's kind of an interesting time right now as far as assessing the landscape and the options that are available? A thousand percent. It's such an interesting question because it is, yes, such an interesting time with endless apps 
and streaming services and platforms to leverage when you think about connecting with audiences through connected TV. In that sort of lies the current predicament. It's increasingly becoming really unpredictable to know on any given day where I find my very specific audience I'm looking for. I know they've shifted to streaming. I know they've cut the cord. What I don't know is what three streaming services they'll be subscribing to in October versus November, because it is so dependent on the content in each streaming service. What we're finding at Roku with over 75 million active accounts, we're really uniquely positioned to help brands solve for that predicament, how to find the audience no matter where they're streaming at scale. So that's something that we're very excited about. And I think brands are getting very excited about We've long talked about how streaming is the scale of linear with the brains of digital. I think in 2024, you're going to see brands really embrace that and think about the relationship they have with the streamer, not only from a straightforward video, targeted video perspective, but honestly from a highly creative, dynamic, innovative breakthrough ad experiences that they can do in streaming in a way that they've just frankly never been able to do in linear. Yeah, and we're going to get into those opportunities from an advertising perspective. But first, I want to go to a clarifying point, I guess. You brought up the fact that, like, you can't fully gauge, you know, whether a consumer is going to be in this streaming platform versus this one within a few months, right? I know just looking at my behaviors, right, uh, like depending on like what types of shows or original program is available, I tend to shift my time accordingly. I guess my clarifying question for you there is, does that account for engagement as well? Because like transparently, like we subscribe to so many different platforms, but sometimes like certain months, I may be more loyal to Hulu versus, say, like a Netflix. So is engagement also a fuzzy area too, not just like whether we subscribe or not? Oh, absolutely. And I love that you liken it to your own behaviors because that's where I think we're starting to see aha moments with the brands we partner with because they are recognizing their streaming behavior is so different than their traditional linear behavior has been for 10, 20, 30 years. What we are finding is that because the engagement, to your point, Alicia, is becoming less predictable, we're seeing sort of a renaissance and a return to aligning with key moments, finding the passion points and ensuring that while I might have investment that's diversified across different streaming solutions, I'm honing in within each of those investments on not only a consistent pulse of video advertising, but also where I can double, triple down on key moments where I know my audience is going to tune in. So be that adjacent to live sports, adjacency to things like the Grammys, or adjacencies to big original content launches and moments. That's what we're seeing as far as how brands are rethinking their investment. And it's becoming a lot more exciting than sort of a traditional spots and dots. Yeah, I love that opportunity to look at things through a more contextual lens and the opportunity from a creative standpoint. So let's get into that because I think that's really the heart of our conversation. To kind of start at a high level, I would love your take on like the progress that we've seen as far as CTV advertising offerings, what the landscape looks like and really what opportunities lie ahead as we think about the capabilities, the different advertising offerings available. Again, like the landscape itself, I'm sure like there's a bit of variance out there, but like if we're looking at it through a macro lens, have we seen a lot of progress as far as, you know, what advertising vehicles or opportunities are available to brands? I think so. I think 2023 was a year of huge advancements in terms of how brands think about their investment in connected TV. Whether it's Roku or not, I've seen and you've probably seen in the press really robust programs that big brands like a Walmart have built across key streaming partners that are transcending video-only investment. They're really thinking about the home screen of a platform like Roku. They're thinking about the reality that some cord cutters are still primarily investing and thinking about SVOD environments where they don't have to see commercials or they're seeing limited commercials. So that means I better engage with them and connect with them on the home screen before they decide what they're going to watch. 
we're seeing brands really find that they can actually solve a problem for streamers through things like a sports zone or a home zone in these curated areas that are brought to you by brands, but really solving a huge consumer problem, streamer problem, which is I don't know what to watch or worse, I know what I want to watch, but I can't find it because things are so fragmented. So I saw a lot of really interesting executions with Roku and elsewhere this year. And I think next year we're going to see brands sit down and think through how to capitalize on the scale of connected TV, but with extremely thoughtful, engaging experiences that leverage the digital components of this ecosystem. So, I mean, to that end, you know, you noted you've seen some really interesting use cases and examples. I'm curious where retailers and brands currently are versus the opportunities that are available, right? And I think one of the key things that that we've kind of been alluding to or nudging at over the course of our chat thus far is the fact that like the space is evolving so quickly, but also at the same time, that makes it a bit more fragmented. It makes it a bit more complex to navigate and best determine your strategies and your investment priorities. So I guess my question for you is, where are retailers at versus the capabilities available? Like, are they just scratching the surface? Do you think that like the innovation happening is far exceeding like the laggards in this space? I mean, this is kind of based on your personal experience, probably, and what you've noted in the space. But I'm curious about your take there. I think retail as a category is leading the pack, or speaking from my experience, a vertical that is the most leaned into thinking about what connected TV should mean as far as a marketing and media strategy, in part because a lot of the questions we're endeavoring to answer, a lot of the behaviors we're trying to train right now on our platform are really centered in the future of shoppability and connected TV. So unsurprisingly, we're seeing some of our biggest retail partners really think about what that will mean in this space. It won't be as apples to apples as how someone transacts, gets inspired and shops on Instagram. But because of our scale, we know it can be as impactful. So we're spending a ton of time creating ad experiences, partnering with the likes of Walmart to integrate their native checkout to really think about both what role connected TV plays to in the attribution cycle and in the inspiration phase and consideration phase, but also how do we create shoppable storefronts where you can buy quite literally off your television screen in a really seamless way. And that's been hugely exciting. And I would say we've seen retailers integrate that concept into their media strategies on our platform in ways that have been really exciting. So to give you an example, owning a show on Roku and then using the talent from the show to create a custom commercial where there's a pretty direct response, hey, pick up your remote and in one click, buy now concept. And that's working really well. So it's sort of hearkening back to the days of more of a QVC-like experience, but we're finding that our streamers are really adapting to it pretty quickly. So we're testing a ton. We're finding that retail is leaned in along with other categories like CPG. But I think that that will be a huge test and learn opportunity next year is really thinking about the role of shoppability in the holistic strategy with partners like Roku. Yeah, I love that. So since you brought up some of the key things that Roku has been testing and trying to bring to market, are there any other key highlights or or innovations that Roku has focused on over the past year? I know we've covered a lot of the headlines, but what really shines through for you as far as like major milestones as we think about the connected TV advertising opportunity for brands? Sure. I think we are first and foremost trying to understand the relationship between shoppable moments and the biggest screen in the living room. So whether that's in advertising, which I mentioned, but also in content, we're spending a lot of time in this year, we partnered with Walmart as one example to really test the limits of what is a streamer willing and wanting to see within the content itself when it comes to shoppable experiences? How do we think about ad units and experiences that don't take them away from their content, from whatever inspired them to want to shop, but instead is a really complimentary experience from the remote to their mobile device where they can 
stay leaned in, stay leaned into their content, but transact and buy that sweater that they see in real time. We're definitely, I would say, at the forefront and really interested in the relationship between retail media and streaming. So we have robust partnerships across the biggest retail media networks out there, but not just partnerships that enable us to leverage their data, but truly partnerships like Walmart Connect, where we're marrying their data, their measurement capabilities with the native checkout integration we've built with them. So that's not only a full funnel measurable solution, but something where we can really test the boundaries on what people want to shop for on their screen, what the price point looks like, what they need to see in terms of variety, how we should think about what I would buy on my TV screen versus what I would prefer to buy on my mobile device. So just a myriad of testing going on there. But ultimately, our goal is to understand that retail media and streaming are going to build on each other's momentum. But how do we do it in a way that uniquely leverages our platform and our assets? I love that because I know those are two distinct facets of the advertising world that we've been covering separately. But I think one thing that I've always been thinking about and considering is like, okay, well, how do these worlds start to come together as we think about the customer journey, which does go throughout from TV screen to mobile device to store aisle. And we're starting to see these lines really blur. And I think that ties to, I think the biggest benefit or value driver for CTV specifically that I've heard come up quite a few times is that there is that opportunity to go full funnel with your strategy, right? And really turn that initial awareness or engagement all the way through to action or conversion, which I think that point around shoppability kind of reaffirms that. So I guess the big question for you is, how should brands be thinking about all of this? Like as they think about investing in CTV, designing their campaigns and their creative, is the goal or should the goal be to go in with that full funnel frame of mind? Or like, how can they best determine that they're investing in CTV in a very strategic way for their business, for their customers, and of course, for the format? That's a great question. I think it happens to be a self-serving answer, but truly (laughs) starting with the platform (laughs) hugely critical right now. And I think starting with the platform that has over half of U.S. households doesn't hurt. But in order to contend with the fragmentation, to contend with how fast consumers are shifting from single app to single app, our advice to brands always is start with the platform and be really specific about your goals. And to your point, they can transcend sort of traditional linear goals, which were very upper funnel, very awareness focused. We're now living in a world where we can not only build solutions for, but also measure more down funnel actions. So start with the platform and think about the entire streamer journey. So while engaging with me via an impactful 30 second ad while I'm watching ad supported content is important, let's take four steps back, four clicks back, we like to say, and think about the moment I turn on my television. There's opportunity now to engage with me and build reach, build frequency, which is so critical to performance, as we know, from the second I turn on my screen. So whether it's helping to point out to me all of the home-focused content I can watch in the day, engage with me and solve a problem with me right off the bat. Roku City is another extremely exciting advertising opportunity that we just opened up in 2023. So when the screen goes idle on your Roku, there is this incredibly dynamic city that we built from literally nothing but our goal to make the platform a little more fun. And ingesting and putting brands inside of Roku City has been something that we couldn't have even predicted would be as impactful as it has. We knew it would be a huge awareness driver because 40 million plus streamers see Roku City a day. What we didn't realize is that the brand sentiment, the consideration would increase considerably from a brand scene, Barbie Land or a Walmart or a McDonald's sign inside this city that they've just come to love and come to love inside their home. So thinking about every touch point from when I turn on my television to when I power it down at the end of the day and thinking about it as an opportunity to not just build reach, but also then include moments that are shoppable, moments that get me to lean forward in a traditionally lean back environment and moments that enable me to push a streamer down funnel and closer to purchase 
is something that brands can absolutely do. It's just about, I think, expanding minds to not just think about it as an in-stream moment, but in fact, a journey, much like you would think about a mobile app. I like that very strong point there. So based on your experience and some examples, are there any common like missteps or mistakes that you've seen brands make like early on in the planning process or or even I guess at the execution level that you think is important to call out like as we think about the bigger opportunity and like what it takes to fully engage and immerse consumers in this advertising experience like is there anything that like brands should be mindful of or, or be on the lookout for as they start to implement their own campaigns and strategies that is a great question I think My recommendation would be to not underestimate the scale. I think while intuitively many buyers and most of us know that the shift to streaming is real and concrete and long term, there is still, I find, a a hesitancy to move the dollars to meet the audience where they are. At this point, truly, no matter how you define your audience, no matter how granular you get, there are scalable solutions in streaming that will enable targeted, efficient reach that will outperform linear. I think there's definitely some hesitancy. So my advice would be to spend time with the platforms like Oroku who sit on such rich data where we can tell you quite precisely what your very specific audience is doing. And believe me, they're streaming. (laughs) You know, they're streaming and then they're, depending on who they are, probably spending a decent amount of time in live linear sports. But as far as the future, to me, it truly is live linear sports for now in more of the traditional sense. And the rest of it is augmented with a streaming first mindset. Another thing that I think we have to continue to educate the marketplace on is we know our brands are looking for quality engagement. My assumption or what we found is that because it streaming is fairly fragmented, their assumption is that it is such a heavy lift to think about creating bespoke brand experiences for streaming. That's not the case at all. With platforms like Roku, we offer creative services. We are so well positioned to take your objectives and take your 30 second asset and create an entire program that is so much bigger than your 30 second spot that is aligned contextually with the moments you care about, but might not look like it traditionally has on TV. We'll leverage the home screen. It might leverage ad units that don't exist anywhere else, but in connected TV. It could leverage a showroom that enables someone on their couch to stroll through the aisles of a Target all on their television screen. Like there's so much we can do and want to do and are already doing that feel big or feel like such an undertaking, but truly are becoming seamless. And for us, becoming really specific because everything we do is built on consumer insight. We don't have any ad experiences that exist that weren't first things that consumers really enjoyed engaging with, things that had a payoff. So for us, we've got the template, we built it in the consumer side of the business, and now we're just translating it over to the advertising side. Yeah. So that would be my advice to like really lean on your partners and expect and ask of them because they are and we are really ready to lean in creatively and help every brand understand what a streaming first investment looks like. Yeah, I love that it's all built around the customer, right? Because I feel like that's the only way you can really go into a platform, understand, you know, what the ideal offerings and experiences are, but also how to measure them, right? And I think it's kind of like a closed loop in that respect. And I guess that ties to a new and exciting area that I I feel like we've kind of referenced here and there. But I think the bigger opportunity, the bigger evolution that's happening here is this convergence of content and commerce and advertising opportunities being embedded into content itself. Everybody's been talking about Walmart with its ad to heart, shoppable ad campaign. And it's built around this idea of like storytelling, right? Everyone loves a Hallmark movie moment. It's, you know, holiday movie time. And they really kind of tapped into that, which I find to be so fascinating, but also so smart, right? Because it, it kind of ties into the fact that everybody loves content, is looking for content, but is also leaning into the cultural moment, so to speak. And I guess my question for you is just given 
your role, you know, the company you're with, like, what does this represent to you, especially as we think about the future opportunities for CTV and how it will continue to evolve to support not just advertisers, but the customer as well. I love that you brought up Add to Heart because it's unequivocally my favorite Mm -hmm. execution of this holiday season, although I will deny saying that if any of my (laughs) other brands are listening. But (laughs) it was such a smart idea that Walmart brought to us and a couple other key partners. And because we had been doing so much testing around this notion of marrying commerce and content in a thoughtful way that leveraged what's so wonderful about streaming, i.e. the targetability, the ability to retarget, the scale, but also the big question that Walmart had constantly pushed us to answer, which is we don't want to replicate what we've always done on Linear. We really want you to think about what commerce and content are supposed to be for streaming. So it was such a fun project to work on with them. I think a couple of things that we found is you can create engaging content, shoppable content until you're blue in the face. If you can't drive eyeballs to engage with it, especially if it's shoppable, you have a problem. So for us, one of the advantages of working with Roku is there's so many touch points on our platform that we can leverage to drive the right person to the right piece of content at the right time. So housing add to heart on the platform was such a win, but then being able to drive a massive audience to engage with it is how we really were able to then drive actual engagement on the clickable overlays within the content. So for us, we are absolutely bullish on commerce and content and streaming on really thinking about the relationship with the remote control when it comes to content in streaming. Our hypothesis is that QR codes can absolutely play a role, and they do for a really qualified audience that's likely already pretty loyal to your brand. But knowing that the remote is right next to me and that in one click, I can go from my content to a learn more, a shop now, a store locator, a storefront in the future, we really think that's the way that the ecosystem will head. We think it's going to be the most seamless way to create commerce within content in streaming. So we did a lot of that with Add to Heart. And so far, the results have shown that our hypothesis is we're likely on to something, I should say. Yeah. And we're going to continue to push the envelope with Walmart there. And what's wonderful about that partnership is that we can think about the types of products that Walmart wants to think about when it comes to in-content experiences and the types of products that one would buy on screen versus on mobile devices. They're just so leaned into understanding this. And we're going to continue to think about that next year. And we're going to continue to find content-driven solutions that enable these shoppable moments that just make so much sense. I can't not pick up my remote. Yeah, love it. It's so, so exciting. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with next and what those future use cases are. I guess the follow-up question there is, and, and this may be undetermined or in the work, so please say so if that's the case. But I'm curious, you know, because these are more content and storytelling led experiences. I mean, how does that influence how marketers should think about goal setting and measurement? Like you mentioned, like the eyeballs are key. That's the only way like you can actually, you know, bring them down the funnel. I understand that. But is there anything else that you've noted as Add to Heart has come to life and has been out in the field that you think may have a longer term impact on how these campaigns and initiatives are measured? That's really interesting. And whether it's Add to Heart or other partnerships we have with some of the major retailers, we are definitely spending a lot of time right now understanding the impact of shoppable components outside of pure conversion. So we know it's early. We know we'll play a very active role in training the behavior that will power actually converting on my television screen, but we are in any one of nine. So while we train the behavior on the consumer side, we still think there's a ton of value in understanding how simply having that functionality in content or having a really interesting custom commercial leveraging the talent of a show that has a shoppable component to it 
how that's impacting perception, consideration, some of the mid-funnel objectives that are hugely important to retailers and other verticals. And what we've found so far is if we look at a piece of creative that is a standard 30-second spot versus a piece of creative that has a thoughtful, shoppable overlay on it and target it to the same person, we do see an increase in those mid-funnel objectives because I think consumers and streamers are starting to recognize the brands that are creating for the environment they're in. So while we don't pretend like today Connected TV is going to drive the same conversions as Instagram, we do think we can in the future. And we're really committed to building that behavior and that muscle. But in the meantime, we're also testing the impact across the funnel or the impact we can have in that attribution cycle because of the investment on Roku. And we know it's going to be massive. We know it already is massive because of our scale and because of our targetability. But now I think creatively, we're going to really change the game as far as the breakthrough role we can play within that cycle, that purchase cycle. Yeah, so fascinating. Is there anything else that we should be keeping an eye on, like as far as Roku's priorities work to shape the future of the category? I mean, just given the reach and impacts of Roku and the work that you guys have done thus far, where else are are you focusing going into 2024? We had a pretty banner year in 2023 as far as introducing new ad experiences that take advantage of that entire streamer's journey. What you'll see in 2024 is a focus on enhancing the capabilities of our existing product suite. So we feel like we really Again, because we understand consumers so well on the platform, we now feel like we've developed a suite of ad products that are going to enable Super Bowl-like reach every day, but that are also very dangerous, exciting weapons to create engagement. So we're going to focus a lot on those ad products that we rolled out in 2023, like Roku City, like our very focused zones, and we're going to make them bigger, better, more exciting for advertisers. So that's something that we're in real time getting feedback on, spending a lot of time with our big brand advertisers who tested in 2023 and making sure that we are just focused on what the home screen is supposed to mean for advertising in the future. The reason we're doing that is because while we love to see the massive and forever shift from linear to streaming, we also recognize that because of serial churning, because of the fragmentation, because of a host of things in streaming, it's complex as far as building the same reach that brands have enjoyed in linear for 50 plus years. So we're really focused on redefining what reach means in streaming and making sure that brands understand that there is still the reach that they are accustomed to and then some in streaming, but it does require us to rethink what it means and really capitalize on the entire streamer's journey and not limit our minds to just the in-stream experience. Awesome. So to that end, I mean, I think we've talked a lot about various trends happening in this landscape. So shoppable content, that convergence of content and commerce, the fragmentation that is very much a reality in this landscape. Are there any other trends bubbling up or trends you're keeping an eye on that you think are really going to come to a head? over the next year? Yes, I think broadly speaking, we're definitely going to see the streaming heavyweights focus on loyalty. So kind of to your behavior, my behavior, right now, the streamer is pretty unpredictable and is following the content when it comes to single app subscription and time spent with any single app. So I think you're going to see the likes of Netflix, Disney Plus, etc. really focus on how do I make Alicia a loyal streaming customer who doesn't abandon the app, turn the app because the second season of The Morning Show or the third season of The Morning Show Mm -hmm. completed. I think like we talked about, we're absolutely going to see retail media and streaming come together in new, bigger, better ways to build on each other's momentum. Retail media sits on a wealth of first party data, as do we. What retail media doesn't have is the inventory, the platforms. So I think you'll see really interesting partnerships converge and you'll see interesting partnerships built up that will be really exciting for the advertising community. And then the shoppable storefront concept. So I think much like we saw in mobile, you will continue to see 
this evolve and you will continue to see platforms like Roku think about every single touch point from the moment I turn on my TV to the moment I turn it off as an opportunity to create a digital storefront. And you'll see that manifest in really interesting new ad experiences. You'll see us test the boundaries, but with the consumer first and foremost in mind. So really respectful, thoughtful, engaging ways that will, I think, transform television from a lean back experience to a really lean forward experience. Mm, I love that, Sarah. Going from lean back to lean forward, I think that's really impactful and just really showcases the ultimate opportunity. It's just up to brands to work with their partners, really understand what opportunities exist. And Honestly, if uh, Walmart shows us anything, it's how powerful just getting creative (laughs) can be, especially as we think about the TV and content consumption experience. But this has been so insightful. Really appreciate you taking the time out to kind of share your take on what's happening in this landscape and, you know, of course, the work that Roku is doing. Really appreciate you taking the time out. Oh, of course. I've enjoyed it so much. Thank you for having me. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Likewise. And we'll be sure to include some helpful links and resources for all of you listening. Like I mentioned, we've been covering CTV and shoppable media quite a bit over the past year. So we want to create a clear link for you all if you want to learn more about the opportunities, examples, things of that nature. And of course, if you have any follow-up questions or comments for Sarah, we are going to try to keep that conversation going on social media. Drop us a line on LinkedIn at Retail touch points. Of course, we're on X2 on at our touch points. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode or the show as a whole. Just leave us a rating or review on your preferred podcast player. We are on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, frankly, anywhere else you are probably there too. We'd love to hear your thoughts so we can improve or investigate new trends and new tactics. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the show. As you may know by now, we are having these conversations weekly with folks like Sarah who are really shaping the future of commerce and are exploring new stories storytelling and marketing opportunities with their partners. So be sure to subscribe so you can get the latest and greatest delivered right to your preferred device. For now, that's it from us, everyone. Thank you again so much for taking the time. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening to this episode of Retail Remix. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. You can find us on your favorite podcast player. Until next time, keep mixing it up.